Okay, this is my first video on elastic collisions in two dimensions. Here's a question, have a look at it. Okay, pause the video, give it a go, and then I'll be going through it. Okay, so we've got a, a wall at an angle, okay, and we've got a, a particle hitting it at a, a velocity that we do know, the velocity that it hits it at. Okay, the initial velocity is 82, okay, and it rebounds at some velocity v, okay, a vector v, and we don't know what this velocity is. So, I'm assuming that you've read the question and I'm just going to go straight in with the relevant equations here. Okay. And the relevant equations are these, okay. Minus EU dot I equals V dot I. Okay. And U dot W equals V dot W. Okay. So these are the two vector equations you need to learn for this course to be able to tackle questions like this. Okay. They're not specifically in the textbook, but they are just things you need to learn. Okay. Cause they have come up in exams for example this exact question here so now if we look at these equations okay the important thing is that i and the w okay we need to understand what these are because the other the other terms are quite obvious what they are so the i and the w are the vectors for the impulse in the wall okay so the impulse vector okay is just any vector parallel to the impulse and it can be any multiple because they cancel out because they're on both sides and the w vector is just any vector parallel to the wall and we're told here, okay, that AB is in the direction 1, 1. So the wall vector must be 1, 1. Now to find the impulse vector, okay, we can either use the impulse equation, I equals M delta V, okay, with our vectors. So impulse is a vector and V is a vector. Or we could just use the fact that the impulse is always perpendicular to the wall. So if the wall vector is 1, 1, okay, how do we find a, a, a vector perpendicular to a 2d vector well we flip the components okay so the i component becomes a j and the j becomes an i okay and we make one negative that's all we do and in this case we don't need to flip them because they're both one okay so we can say we're flipping them and we're going to make one negative so i've chosen to make the top one negative you could have made the bottom one negative so what this means is that this vector here the impulse that always acts perpendicular okay is minus one one or it's parallel to that the important thing is this doesn't mean our impulse is minus one one. It means our impulse is a scalar multiple of minus one one, i.e. it's parallel to this. But this is not our impulse, okay? We need to be wary of that. So now that we know these things, okay, we can tackle the first part of the question showing that V is four I plus six J. Okay, so we know, okay, that minus EU dot I equals V dot I. Okay, so let's plug in our values. Okay, minus a third, times u, which we know is 8, 2, okay, dot i, which we also know is minus 1, 1, equals v, which is what we don't know. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make v a, b, okay, so v dot i, okay, and what I'm going to say, okay, to the examiner, I'm going to say letting v equal a, b, okay, so they know what I've done, okay, and they've not just seen some random a, b vector out of nowhere, okay, so, let's start um, doing stuff with this equation then. So we've got the uh, minus a third out the front. That's just a scalar, okay? That's our E, that's a scalar. Now what's in the brackets, okay? Well, we've got eight times minus one plus two times one, okay? So that's minus six equals, okay? And what do we get here when we dot product these? Okay, we get minus A plus B. So this is what we get so far. And then what we can do, okay, is just times those out to get positive two equals minus A plus B. And this is our first equation. Okay, however, we can't solve it because we have two unknowns and only one equation. That is where this second impulse equation comes in handy. So u dot w equals v dot w. And remember, we know w is a vector parallel to the wall. And that's 1, 1 in our case. So u dot w, so 8, 2 dot w, 1, 1 equals v, which we've let to be a, b dot w, which is also 1, 1. So what's the second equation we get? Well, 8 plus 2 is 10 when we dot product those and that's equal to a plus b and that is our second equation here okay now as you can see we now have two equations with just a and b and so we can solve these simultaneously so it's solving one and two and when we solve these and we can put them into our calculator okay we are believe it or not we're going to get a equals four and b equals six Hence the velocity after the collision is four, six. Okay, so that's our first part done. Okay, that's part A done. And that's the bulk of the marks. Okay, so just for using these vector equations, okay, and you have to remember these, they're not in the book. I can't stress that enough. 
They're not in the book, but you need to remember these, okay? Now, let's have a look at the next bit. Find the magnitude of the impulse received by the ball in the impact. So we know that our impulse is parallel to the vector minus one, one. But as I said earlier, our impulse isn't necessarily that exact vector. It could be, but it could be any scalar multiple of this vector as well. And we need to double check that. Okay, so we know the impulse is given by the mass times the change in velocity of the particle. Okay, so, and the, the change in velocity, we can write as a final velocity minus the initial velocity like this. Okay, V minus U. So we're just going to plug in our values. Okay, we know that the mass, okay, we're told is 0 0.25 kilograms down here. Okay, we know that the final velocity, well, we've just found this, that is 4, 6. And we're going to be taking away the initial velocity, which we know is 8.2. So it's this, okay? So we get 0 0.25 multiplied by 4 minus 8 minus 4. And then 6 minus 2, 4. And 0 0.25 times minus 4, 4 is just minus 1, 1. So in fact, in this specific case, our I vector, okay, this impulse vector that happened to be parallel to our impulse, actually happens to be our impulse okay minus one one this is never normally the case this is just a um this is just an occurrence that just happened to happen in this question so if that's our impulse vector we're not quite done because it says find the magnitude of the impulse okay so the last thing we need to do is find the magnitude of i okay that's just the square root of its two components okay so we're going to get root two newton seconds so that is our magnitude of our impulse okay so Quick recap, okay, the question just involves using these two vector equations, okay, then doing a very simple impulse calculation.